The Listening Heart with Pastor Randy Dignan. Hello, Pastor Randy Dignan here, Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri with The Listening Heart. I want to talk to you about The Listening Heart for just a second. You've heard it said before that God works in mysterious ways, and He does. And one of the ways He does work in mysterious ways is that He's always moving behind the scenes. God's not sitting in heaven wondering what He's going to do today. God's a God that is interested in your life and my life, and He's moving behind the scenes. In fact, the Bible's full of people that God used when they moved. Abraham moved. David moved. And my favorite person in the Bible, Jesus Christ moved when He left heaven, came to this earth, and moved on this planet as He was touching people's lives, saving souls, healing the sick, raising the dead. And thankfully, He moved all the way to the cross and moved out of the tomb to become the Savior of you and me. God's a God that likes to move, and so Listening Heart is going to start moving. We're excited about this. We're taking the program now on a neat journey. We'll be meeting new guests, except bringing them to the studio, no more. We'll be going where they're at. We'll be going to their offices, to their places of work. You see, I think Christians sometimes suffer from what's called Elijah syndrome. You know what that is? That's when you have the same problem Elijah had, where you sit and feel like sometimes, I'm the only one. Well, the purpose of this is to take us out of studio and show you that you are not the only Christian. There's still 7,000 not bow their knee to Baal. There's still Christians looking for God, seeking Him out, and wanting God to move. God wants to move on your life today. God wants to move on my life. Now, how do we do that? Remember, God's still speaking. Our hearts need to continue to be listening. The listening heart, a program now that's going to see God move now more than ever. God bless, and let's get moving. Hello, Pastor Randy here with the message segment of the program. Looking forward to this particular devotional, this message for the day. And it's going to be an interesting thought considering the guest I have. Just a while, I'm going to have one of the most amazing ladies I've ever met in my life, Mrs. Donna Bishop, who's been married to her husband over 40 years, been in the ministry over 40 years. She's going to tell you in a story that most wives would never dream of hearing story or the news of her husband becoming very ill, waking up from his illness, not even recognizing who his wife is. She had to teach him everything again, learning how to speak, learning how to write, and uh, just amazing to see how it was literally almost like 20 years of ministry with one man who became ill and then being married to the same man but having a totally different husband. What a testimony she's going to have. And it really makes me think of the, the subject of toughness. You know, I've I grew up in a, in a generation where toughness was defined by maybe your sports abilities or how tough a fighter you are. I mean, I got some boxing gloves here today, and, and I love it. I've, I've studied uh, different martial arts through the years. I've enjoyed learning how to box, and I've played football. and So all those things sometimes come to mind as, as subjects of toughness. But if you study the Bible, you'll find God has a different perspective of toughness. Not that those things previously mentioned uh, don't require any toughness. I mean, obviously, I'll take a moment and give a shout-out to our military, how tough they are, the, the sacrifices they make, the United States military in particular. If you're watching this program and you're a vet or a current service member, thank you so much, Pastor Randy and the Listening Heart, for your service to our country. But if you look at the Apostle Paul, Paul himself used sometimes in the epistles sporting analogies, applications, but Paul himself really doesn't do a whole lot of sports, and yet he's probably one of the toughest men that ever walked on this planet. In fact, he says this in closing, his, his final chapter of writings before he becomes a martyr for the, for the cause of Christ, he says this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and verse number 7, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. What an amazing testimony of Paul. I mean, wow. If you were to ask Paul today, Paul, is the Christian life hard or easy? He would say yes. I'm sorry, Paul. I think you misunderstood me. It wasn't a yes or no question. Is the Christian life hard or easy? Please choose one of the two. Paul would say yes because he'd say it's both. Paul knew it was like to be on the mountaintop. Paul knew it was like to be in the valley. In fact, in Philippians chapter 4, Paul says he learned to be content no matter what the circumstances around him were like. If they were positive, he was good with it. If they were negative, he was good with it. Paul was not going to allow the circumstances to change him. He was going to be one that changed the circumstances. 
here I am today and I've shown you these gloves and, and we're going to talk to a lady in just a while who's, who's, who's so tough and her testimony of God's grace just demonstrates toughness. One of my heroes, and I love him on the program today, is Pastor Bill Clark from First Baptist Church in Bridgeview, Illinois, 50 minutes from Chicago. Pastor the same church 43 years. Watch this. He's beat cancer three times. He'd tell you he's a very sickly man. If we were to get in a fight, probably wouldn't be fair or very good on his end because I'm so much bigger, younger, and stronger. But the fact is, he's tougher than I could ever dream to be. I want to be as tough as him. Why? Because he was one that said, I'm not going to quit. We live in a generation where Christians are quitting all the time. I saw a picture recently that made me laugh. It said, good morning, America. What can I be offended at today? And look, we're not talking about the world anymore. We're talking about Christians getting offended at silly things. Paul wasn't going to be offended. Life was too short. Paul said, I've got a, a purpose to living this life. And this verse, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 says, I have fought a good fight. Now, let me give you three simple thoughts. And all these thoughts come from this verse. Number one, I fought a good fight. Yeah, sometimes people don't like the word fight or fight, but it's in the Bible. But don't you notice what Paul said? He didn't say, I fought a fight. He said, I fought a, a good fight. There's some things worth fighting for. I want to fight for my family. I want to fight for my faith. I see in the United States of America today that the concept and the biblical principle of the home and family is under major attack. And some might fault the liberal media, liberal politicians, but ultimately we fault Satan. Satan is against biblical principles, biblical marriage, and he is at an all-out effort now to destroy the beautiful gift of the home to the church. And God gave us the home. I thank God for my wife and my four children. I'm glad to be a husband and a dad. And listen, those concepts, those titles are almost looked down upon in America. And those things are worth fighting for. We live in a society today where the Christian gets looked down upon. A good has become evil. Evil has become good. We praise sin. We reward people for, for wickedness. And yet our soldiers and our preachers get looked down upon a, uh, across the world and even within our country. So listen, there's some things worth fighting for. And as Christians, we need to have the boldness and the courage to stand up and say, wait a minute, no, no, that's not right. And voice my mind. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. The second thing I want you to notice, he says, I have finished my course. Everybody has a course in life. Everybody has a purpose in life. You gotta finish it. Too many Christians quit. Too many Christians get discouraged. Too many Christians take a detour. And then the next thing you know, they're AWOL. They've left, the, they've left this battle of the Christian life. Oh, no, no, my friend. If you're saved by the grace of God, it's time to get back in the battle. It's time to enlist again. It's time to get fired up about the things of God. It's time to realize that there is an urgency. America needs you and me to stand up and finish our course. Oh, it's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. Amen? A boxing match it is, consists of multiple rounds. Some rounds look good. Some rounds don't look good. They, they scorecard each round. Can I tell you something? In the rounds of life, sometimes we'll look like we're winning. Other times we'll look like we're getting beat up. But we live to fight another round. Why? Because I'm going to finish this course. By the way, here's my power. Here's my tool. This is my trainer. That's my coach in my corner as I'm fighting in this thing called life. And I'm trusting in God, my coach, my trainer, to help me get the victory and to continue to stay faithful no matter what happens. In just a little while, you're going to meet a lady named Donna Bishop who, who's going to be a beautiful testimony to that. When many women, many wives would have just turned around and walked away, she said, I'm staying right by my man. Now, after 43 years of marriage, they have three sons, they have grandchildren, they operate a camp that sees thousands of teenagers come through every summer. They've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds saved through the years. They've touched many lives. Why? Because they're going, their goal is to finish their course. They're in their 60s now, I believe, and they're not quitting. They're pressing on. They're pressing on. And Paul said that. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Number three, and I love this one. I have kept the faith. Paul said, I didn't let go of my faith. Oh no, I'm not giving up on my faith. I'm gonna to cling to my faith. The Old Testament has a story of one of David's mighty men who was battling one time. And he got a hold of that sword. The Bible says his hand clave to the sword. That phrase, clave to the sword, means after the battle was over, 
they literally, he could not let go of the sword. They literally had to pry his fingers off of the sword because his grip was so strong. He was not going to let go of that sword that was saving his life in battle. And I tell you the problem with many Christians today, we've let go of our sword. This is our faith. We've got to cling to it here and mostly here. And we've got to believe it and trust in it and stand for it and preach it and memorize it and love it. Why? Because, hey, we're in this for the long haul. At the time of this recording, I'm coming up on my 22-year spiritual birthday, the day of my salvation. I got saved at 18 years old, July 17, 1994. And now in the year 2016, I'll be saved 22 years. And I'm so grateful that God in His mercy reached down from heaven and saved me. He started something in my heart 22 years ago. Shame on me if I quit. Shame on you too. If you and I have been saved by the grace of God, let's press on. How? Take it one day at a time. Set a goal like Paul, like Donna Bishop, and her husband, who's been on this program before too, John Bishop. To, you know what? We've made our mind up. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to fight the good fight. I'm going to finish my course, and I'm going to keep the faith. God is worthy. Christian, rise up. Put on your gloves. Tell the devil we're coming. In Jesus' name, we're going to stand for what's right, stand for what's truth, because we are on the winning side. Stay tuned. Donna Bishop's on her way. God bless. Hello, I'm Pastor Nick Dignan of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. You may have seen my brother's program, The Listening Heart. Well, we just want everyone to know that if there's anything we can do to be a help to you and your family, please feel free to contact us by going to our website at www.bbcjc.com. Or if you're ever in our area, here's a church that loves and cares for people. We'd love to meet you and have the chance to visit with you and worship the Lord with you. May God bless you and your family. And take care. Hello and welcome to the interview segment of The Listening Heart. And I'm so thrilled to have a guest today that I believe will be a blessing to so many of you as you watch this program. I know many of you watch this program regularly. It's an honor to have Mrs. Donna Bishop on the program today. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Ms. Donna Bishop is the wife of John Bishop and uh, the mother of three boys and uh, operator of a camp that's been in existence for 41 years and all of that to serve Jesus Christ. So the first thing we want to start with before we move on is your salvation testimony. Tell us in the audience how you got saved. Yes, I was. I trust the Lord as the Savior. I was 13 years old in my bedroom up in Illinois and uh, I had made a profession of when I was really young. But the Lord convicted me, and uh, I trust the Lord, and I'll never forget the day. <laughs> Amen. Then not long after that, you go to college, and you meet this man. Yes. And John Bishop, who's a preacher. Yes. You marry him, and you move to Arkansas. Yes. Right? And he's the pastor of a church. Well, he was an evangelist. Evangelism, okay. And then you start a camp. Tell us a little about the starting of the camp. We started the camp. We bought uh, 40 acres, and my parents lived here also, and they helped us in the ministry. And, encourage us. My dad did all the building and everything. And, uh, so uh, my dad and John worked together and started it. And of course, back then we did everything ourselves. We <laughs> cooked and did everything. So it was, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. I love the camp ministry. You've seen a huge difference probably over 40 years in the kids back then to now. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. So 41 years of ministry. Now, I want to shift gears a little bit. Uh, no ladies ever, nothing, you, can, you can't plan for the, what you experience as a lady. You marry a preacher, one day, your husband passes out in a basketball game, I believe. Tell us about what happened there. Uh, he got sick. He had very pain in the back of his neck. And, of course, for a man to go to the hospital, it, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, bad. Bishop, it's right? bad, yes. <laughs> so he, he took him to the hospital, and that's where they uh, did a spinal tap, but it was compromised. And so, therefore, they didn't know exactly what it was. But uh, they let him out of the hospital after about four days. They put him on uh, meningitis medicine and over but they took him off of it and let him out because he was doing much better. And one month later, uh, it was in November, uh, he was sitting in his chair rocking and having devotions. And he just kept sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. And I thought, okay, this is spiritual enough. We need to go on with life. <laughs> so work. I went over and I shook his shoulder and he was just stiff. And uh, that's when he couldn't talk back or answer me or anything. And so it was wow. from that point on. So. So did an ambulance come in? Or no, just we just, yeah, we took him to the doctor and, and uh, uh, they worked for sure. We took him to a neurologist and so they call it aseptic meningitis. And he, he went into a coma. 
Yeah, well, he was kind of, he was just kind of out of it, couldn't talk and communicate and support for a while. And then he wakes up and he looks at you and he doesn't even know who you are. Right. And I, I you know, begin to think, now, surely he didn't forget everything. So sometimes I would trick him to see if he really did forget things. <laughs> but he would not remember anything. I gave him our wedding pictures and he didn't remember our wedding. He said, Dad, that's me, but I don't remember being there. Wow. And so I started teaching about the family and things like that. So you were literally, and I, and I say this respectfully, you had three boys, and now all of a sudden you're raising three, four boys because right. you had to teach your husband. I mean, you've been leaning on him. He's been the leader of the home, and all of a sudden you had to become the strength of the home. What was that like? It was hard. It was really hard, and uh, it's hard to, to imagine that that he was not able to take those things. And in fact, Luke would come home, and uh, he would teach him phonics and teach him how to read. Well, and and he was like that. about he was ten years old. Ten, ten years old, and uh, so we just all worked together. And so he's not too bad right now. Is he? <laughs> no, he's not too bad, <laughs> brother Luke. Yeah. The, I mean, a, a lot of ladies would look at your life and just say, I mean, why why did you stay? I mean, why why would you would deal with that? Uh, one thing, because my home church, I grew up in a Christian home, and my church taught me, once you're married, you're married for life. Amen. And so I made that commitment long time ago, before I was married. So I didn't even think about uh, divorcing him. In fact, I went to the Lord, and I said, okay, Lord, now what am I supposed to do? You know, everything has changed, and, you know, I don't have a husband that could do it. What about the ministry? I mean, I was just worried about everything. And uh, it just seemed like the Lord came to me and said, uh, same thing you've always been doing. Wow. And he said for me, you know, God said to be a help me to your husband. And so that's what my job was before and it still is. So I try to do my best to make my husband be his best for God, regardless of what it, what it takes, because that's my job is to help him. And I can testify personally that she does that mm -hmm. and does it very well. So now you operate this camp, plus you and your husband travel and speak. I want to go on the camp subject a little bit. It's called Triple S. Why is it called Triple S? It stands for Salvation separation and service and first of course the most important thing is their salvation and then uh, we need to separate our lives from the world and live for God and serve him. Amen. You've been operating this camp for 41 years which and I say this respectfully again that was one year before I was born <laughs> and I've had the privilege of preaching in this camp numerous times. What, what, what was it about camp that you and your husband decided, what, what drew you to the camp and why was the need there? When we were uh, traveling evangelism right after we were married uh, we went to several camps to speak, and it just seemed like it was a time you could get the kids together, and they were away from everything, and God just really worked in their heart. And we both just said, after one camp, we both said, that's for us. We need to do that for the Lord. And it just uh, started from there. <laughs> wow. So you, your husband's operating the camp, and at the time of his sickness, was he a pastor or still an evangelist? He was a pastor then. He was a pastor at that time. And I know you've already addressed this a little bit, but what was it like to, the first summer after his sickness? saying, you know what, like you said, God told you it's time to keep doing what you're doing. What was that first summer of camp like? I mean, people were so used to seeing this healthy, strong, able John Bishop, and one year later, things have changed. What was that like? It was, of course, it was harder on us as a family, but we all worked together, and, and the Lord brought in people that we needed to help and run the camp. But when he would speak, um, it was amazing. The kids would listen to him. They wouldn't make a sound. He may only speak 10, 15 minutes, you know. But they would just listen to him, and they just fell in love with him just the way he was. And it seems like God used him more now than he was before. Not that he wasn't, but I'm just saying before it was uh, okay. But now God just really uses him. Amen. Now I've got to ask you some. I know this may sound like a funny question, but it's almost like you've been married to two men and one man, right? It seems different before you say but after. Which one do you like better? Uh, this one now. This one now. <laughs> Is he nicer to you than before? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, it's, he's changed a lot. You know, I always say, well, I've been married to two. Two different men, nobody died, but it's all scriptural. <laughs> it's all scriptural. That's right. That's a blessing. I want to, you know, a lot of times in our in our ministries, the, the focus and emphasis goes to men, men to the preachers, men do this. But as a lady, you walk with God too. How sweet has God been to you through the ups and downs of life? He's, I wouldn't have made it without him. Um, you know, when it first happened, I said, no, Lord, I don't want this. I want to go back to the old way, you know, and I rebelled against what God had in my life. And as I slowly learned to surrender, that this is what God has for me. And as long as you're rebelling, God can't teach you anything. And so as I surrendered, I knew that, and that's when I surrendered, that just brought the closeness. The Lord and I were one, and you know, because we were, I wasn't rebelling against His will for my life. And wow. uh, and it, and God knows that we struggle with these things. It's not something that just overnight. Oh, it's okay. I had to 
work at it and it took me some time but uh, there's no place more precious than when you surrender to God's perfect will for your life. Wow, well and, said. Uh, I'm just thankful for that place. Amen. Now I know a lot of the focus is on your husband and, and he speaks and travels the country and has preached to thousands but you also speak to ladies. I what would you say to this audience of ladies today about the importance of I mean America has gone so away from biblical the biblical structure of the home what would you say to encourage these ladies in the audience today about being a wife and a champion for Christ? There's nothing like it. When we surrender to God's will, there's just so much peace. And there's joy and happiness that the world can ever give you. And don't, don't run out on marriage because that's God's will for one thing. And another thing is your children need you. And it's just the, it's just the right place to be. And God just can lead us and use us for His glory and to raise your children for Him, to serve Him. And just, just stay with the stuff. Amen. Amen. I guess one last question I gotta ask because I know you're pretty proud of this, but after being around men all your life, three sons and a husband, you, you got some grandbabies now. I do. How do you like being a grandma versus being a mom? Oh, I like the grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you like being the grandma? What do your grandkids call you again? Mimi. 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 Amen. Ms. Donna, thank you so much for being on our program today. It's been an honor thank to you. have you. So. I appreciate it. Thank you. Amen. The lives that this lady and her family have touched is just incredible. And I'm just honored to be a part. I'm just glad I can call you a friend. And we love your family. love this camp. We support you all 100%. So thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll see you in class. God bless. Thanks for watching. I always get asked, how can I find more information about deaf people in sign language? Well, the good news is the internet has a lot of the information. Just hit in your search engine, American Sign Language, and you'll find out all kinds of information. Also, each state has its own commission for the deaf and school for the deaf. So I would encourage you to check those things out. They have a lot of deaf activities, deaf functions, sometimes free sign language classes. And I would encourage you to find those organizations and, and get together with some of those functions and be exposed to that. God bless. Have a great day. Welcome to sign language class. Wow. I bet you're still amazed by the testimony of Donna Bishop. What an incredible story from an incredible lady. By the way, I've known this lady for almost 10 years, and she is the real deal. In fact, I have Clara here today, my daughter, the baby of the family. You know Miss Donna Bishop, don't you? Isn't she a blessing? Amen. I thought you got tired of seeing my oily face, so I brought on a pretty face to help you teach, teach sign language today, so she's gonna help me teach sign language. Clara, it's good to have you in class today. You got anything you wanna say? No, you're just ready to sign, huh? Well, after seeing the message where I talked about fighting for the good fight of faith and all that, and you saw me interview Miss Donna Bishop, we're gonna give you some of the signs that we've used in this class. And so first of all, we emphasize the word fight today. What's the sign for fight? Fight. Fight, there you go, fight. You can hold your fist up and fight. You fight with your brothers and sisters a lot? You do? Yeah, I know you do. But we're talking about fighting for Jesus, right? So fight, what's the sign for fight again? Fight, that's right, it's like a stance fight. You can also do it this way, fight. That's the conflict of fight. But for this, the purpose of this sign of class, we'll do fight, all right? How about the sign for good? Well, you like that sign, huh? Are you a good girl? Most of the time, huh? What's the sign for bad, by the way? Bad. Bad is the hand going down. Good is just stays the same, all right? So let's do it again. All right, ready? Fight. Fight. Good. Good. All right. Now, we talked about finishing our, our course. Finishing for these guys. What's the sign for finish? Finish, that's exactly right. It's a pretty, it's a beautiful conceptual sign. Watch, it's just like, I'm done. I can step away from something. My hands are off the task. My hands are busy, I'm done. Let's do it again, finish, finish, finish. Paul finished, Donna Bishop's trying to finish. And as young as you are at eight years old and daddy at 40, we're gonna try to finish with Jesus, amen? All right, good, so we have fight, good, finish now. Faith, faith, remember that sign? Mine. To two ropes, two fists of the rope. Mind a rope. It's like this, all right? You, you believe with your mind. Faith is believing, and you're grabbing on to that faith. Faith, all right? So let's see, now you know. What's the sign for faith? Faith, that's right. Faith. Now, we also talked about holding on to that, keeping that faith. What's the sign for keep? You're going to hang on to it. Hang on to it, right? You're going to hang on to it. One hand, just use your one hand. Like right, this, keep. There you go. You're going to keep. Now let's see if you got to keep the faith. Keep the faith. There you go. Keep the faith. All right, you ready? Show the, show the class again. Keep the 
faith. Very good, all right? So that's what the Christian life's all about. We're gonna keep, keep the faith. There's several different signs for keep, but for the purpose of this particular cast, we'll say keep. We're gonna keep on it. We need to keep on our American heritage, keep faithful to church, keep our family, and keep the faith, all right? Now, we don't wanna do this word, quit. Remember what that is, quit? That's right. You were involved with something, and you came out of it, all right? Let's do it again. What's the sign for quit? That's right. Are you a quitter? No, we don't want to be quitters, especially when it comes to Jesus Christ. We want to stay with Him, all right? Now, you're too young to be thinking about this, but I know you know the sign. Because you're eight now, Daddy's 40, and you'll be allowed, I'm allowed you to get married when you're 40, right? Right? <laughs> What's the sign for marriage? Marriage, that's right, marriage. Two hands come together in marriage. Boy, what a testimony Donna Bishop was. 43 years of marriage, the same man. Uh, as she said, I love her joke. She's married to two different men. And she likes the second one better. And they're the same man. That was a great joke. I, uh, I hope you caught that and enjoyed that. All right? Let's do a quick review. All right, ready? Let's do it together. Ready? Fight. All right, good. Finish. Faith. Keep. We're not going to quit. We're not going to quit, right? Marriage. And then our favorite sign we teach at every sign of class in the end is Jesus. What's that sign? Jesus. Even an eight-year-old knows that. Jesus. Jesus is the reason for this program. Jesus is the reason that Donna Bishop keep going on. Clara, thank you for helping me teach class today. I'm sure they appreciate it. You love sign language, don't you? I love you, baby. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you so much for watching this program. Pastor Randy loves you. God bless and make it a great day. Keep the fight. Did you enjoy the programming today? What a blessing it was to see the interviews, of course, hear a message from God's Word, and wrap it up with sign language class. I want to take a moment to remind you that this is a viewer-supported program. I'm so thankful that I've been able to hear from many of you through social media and on my email account, which the information is available to you. And if you would pray for our program and pray about supporting it financially, it would be a huge blessing. And again, a thank you to those that have supported us financially and most importantly, prayerfully. Most of all, if you're not sure you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please contact us. We would love to tell you about the greatest event that can happen in a man or woman or child or teenager's life. The salvation by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Pastor Randy here reminding you, God's still speaking. Make sure our heart is still listening. We love you. We thank God for you. We're praying for you. And make it a great day because God already has. See you soon. God bless. If you would like to become a ministry partner with The Listening Heart, you may contact us at www.bbcjc.com. If you would like a DVD copy of this program, please visit our website at www.bbcjc.com. Listening Heart is a viewer-supported ministry.